Part 3, Factoring, Petty Cash, and Bank Reconciliation. Now, for accounting for financing of receivables, there are two ways that you can record it. Uh, one way is, um, is it a sale of receivables? That's called factoring. If it's not, it's really secured borrowing. In that case, you're not going to take the receivables off the books. If it is considered a sale of receivable or fa factoring, then under GAAP, you can remove the receivables from the book, record the proceeds, and recognize gain or loss. Now, there's two ways that you can do factoring without recourse. Buyer assumes the risk of the bad debt with recourse. Seller retains risk of some of the bad debt. Now, sale without recourse. The buyer cannot ask the seller for more money if the accounts receivable are not all collected and the buyer assumes the risk of bad debt. The accounts receivable are removed from the seller's books. Sales with recourse. Under GAAP, the seller assumes the responsibility of bad debt and re must record the estimated liability for bad debt. The accounts receivable are removed from the seller's books. Under the international standard, the accounts receivable remains on the books of the seller and instead a liability is created for the factored amount. So let's go through all three of those examples. All right, company transfers $100,000 of accounts receivable without recourse. The buyer remitted 85% of the factored amount less a 3% upfront fee to cover returns and allowances. Assume the fair value of the 15% interest is $11,000, $11, what are the journals? First, you would receive $100,000 less 82%, I mean, I'm sorry, um, let me see, 18%. Then, the receivable from factor is going to be $11,000. And loss on sale of receivables is normally your plug. So the accounts receivable that comes off the books is 100000 You would book your cash and receivable from factor, and then the difference would be your loss. Now, what if instead this had been with recourse? Okay, in that case, what we have to do is, again, the cash received is going to be only 82000 the receivable from factor is still going to be 11, but now we're going to record the recourse obligation, the accounts receivable, and as you notice, our loss on the sale of receivable goes up by that amount of recourse liability. Now let's look at our last example. What if we did it on the international standard with recourse? Okay, what we would do is book the cash minus the uh, 15% and the 3% fee. We would book the finance charge of 3000 and we would book a liability financing arrangement. If you notice, we do not take the accounts receivable off the books. Now let's take a look at something that a lot of companies have and you might get stuck doing, which is called the petty cash fund. And this is what companies do. They'll keep a small... Now, remember, this is not for large dollar items. It's for emergency purchases. Okay? It's a small amount. And what happens is we, we have to reconcile it at the end of each month. And it's called a petty cash fund. Now, it's established by taking cash out of the bank and giving it to a custodian who must keep track of the expenditures and the cash on hand. And you're going to usually reconcile it at least once a month. So let's take a look at an example. My company establishes a $300 petty cash fund. At month end, there was $37 left in the following receipts for office supplies, advertising, postage, and miscellaneous expense. What are the journal entries to establish the fund, replenish the fund, and if the fund was then increased to $400? So, to establish the fund, we're going to debit petty cash and take it out of the cash account. To replenish the fund, the first thing you always want to do is take the total amount of cash, which is $300, minus the cash on hand, and that's going to tell you how much you have to write a check for. 
Then you're going to journalize all your expenses, and hopefully they equal the 263, which in this case they do. Now, what if you need to increase the fund? Well, you're going to book the difference, because by increasing it by 100, we now have $400. Now, the last thing we're going to cover is a bank reconciliation. Now, one of the most important tools for cash is the bank reconciliation. Since all cash receipts are deposited into the bank account and cash disbursements are made by check, the bank account provides a separate record of cash. It's desirable to periodically compare the bank balance and the balance in the company's own records and reconcile any differences. Differences being the cash and book balance occur due to the timing of recognition of certain transactions and errors. So how do you normally do it? Well, you always start by looking at the bank balance and you adjust uh, includes timing differences such as deposits in transit and checks in checks in transit and bank errors and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the book you're going to look at the cash in the book and then you're going to adjust also for timing problems also for any errors so another way of looking at these steps would be to do it like this. You start with a balance per bank. You add deposits outstanding, i.e. normally the bank ends at like the 26th of the month, but, but companies are still depositing until the last day of the month. Those are called deposits in transit. Checks outstanding. You have issued checks, and they have not all cleared the bank. And then the other thing you might have is errors. Errors are the bank clears the check for a wrong amount or clears somebody else's check. Any type of errors by the bank, you need to call the bank to fix them. It is not a journal entry. Now we go to the book side. The book side is we're going to add any collections from the bank, minus any service charges, minus any non-sufficient funds, also known as bouncing checks, and plus or minus any errors. You must always do journal entries for any adjustments to the balance per book. These two at the end of this process have to equal. So now let's take a look at an example. Okay, Mike's Leisure shows a cash balance of 38018 at the end of the month. It includes a service fee of $30. NSF check of $1,200 and monthly notes payable deducted from the account of $33. Now, that cash balance is actually not the ledger. That is what the bank is showing on the bank statement. So let me start that off in the beginning. Let me fix that right now. Okay, I fixed that. It's Mike's bank balance as a cash balance of 38018 at the end of the month. This is what the bank statement is showing. And on it includes service fee of $30, an NSF check of $1,200, a monthly note pay payment deducted from the account of $3320, which included $320 in interest. The books had a balance of $38,918 with deposits outstanding of $6,300. These were deposits that were made between the date the bank closed to when the company's books closed. And outstanding checks. These are checks. We go through this process and we have $8,420 worth of checks that have not cleared the bank yet. And a check for $30 was incorrectly processed by the bank for $300. A payment from a client for $2,000 was recorded as $200 by the company. So, now we start with the bank. We start with the bank balance of 38018. We add in deposits and transit, subtract out checks outstanding.
and a bank a check was incorrectly cleared so we've got to add back in two hundred seventy dollars and we do need to call the bank about that so now we have an adjusted bank of thirty six one sixty eight which is exactly what we need the books to show so we start out with the balance per books we're going to add in the cash receipt error of 2000 was recorded by 200 by the company so we have to add that back in and then we have to deduct the non-sufficient funds check the notes payable the interest expense and the service fee and lo and behold we balance but remember all of these on the book side we have to do journal entries for now that these balance now we can do our journal entries all right here is our journal entry we're going to debit miscellaneous expense for the service fees we're going to uh, debit accounts receivable for the nsf check somebody paid us with a bad check we're going to book interest expense and we're going to reduce our notes payable and we're also then going to credit accounts receivable for the 1800 and we're also going to do the uh, difference which is the cash now check beginning back book is 38.916 minus this adjustment of 2750 and we get back to our existing balance and that ends this presentation part three